Okay, people, today we're going to complete IA, and but before you do IA, it's very important for you to know some of the rules and regulations and skills that you need to have in uh, IA. So, uh, I'd like you to take a quick look, quick scan, about 20 seconds or 30 seconds. Just a quick scan, not difficult um, kind of thing. Uh, just the first one, not the second one or the third one. The one that says spectacle one. So, a quick scan, and uh, let's take a look at what you need to do. If you're ready, take a look at the discussion questions. It's not difficult for you to guess that it is going to be things on um, oscillation and um, yeah, finding G or finding M, I think. I think finding K over here. Okay, let's take a look at a few things over here. Let's focus our attention on the table, shall we? Uh, the table that has mass and time 20. Now let's discuss this a bit further. Do you think it makes sense for the error to be 0 0.01 second for timing? What's your reaction time? Actually, we can test your reaction time. Uh. Let's see whether there's any disparity between the male reaction time and the female reaction time. Oh, man! A battle between the men and the women. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> let's, see who, let's see which one is the more retarded gender. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's like... Huh? <laughs> okay, it's very simple. Eh? The methodology is this. Uh, this is actually a very important one. Huh? I'm going to introduce words, very important words to you. The methodology to, re to determine the reaction time, there are many approaches, right? Now, the methodology I'm going to choose is this method, which is using kinematics and using a dropping ruler. So the idea is that when I drop it, your mind, the, the, the eye see it, and then do, 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 do. some of it take longer, some of it take shorter, and then it transmits the electrical impulse to your finger, and then chong. So do you agree that this will be the S? Yeah? And then the U is zero, agree? Initial speed is zero. So U is zero, S is the distance, and um, G is 9.81, so you can calculate the time, right? Ah, so ah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so can we have a representation from this race, this gender? <laughs> this gender, yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> Let, let's invite you on stage. <laughs> okay, okay. The, the girls have their own ways of choosing. Last one to squat, wow. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Do this gender proud, huh? <laughs> Scotty, the whole thing falls through. Wow. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, ready? Ah, uh? one. Okay, okay. So, 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 let's take this. Ah, uh. so it's from hundred to uh, seventy-two. So it's about eighteen. Let's once is not enough. Let's do it a few times. Yeah, uh, same, same, same. Oh, that's. Uh, also 18, quite oh. consistent, yeah. Quite consistent. Let, one last time, one time. Ah, faster already. Seven, 12. Wow. Ah, so 12 plus 18 plus 18 is 48 divided by... Oh, 28, sorry, I got... Uh, so 28 and uh, 28 plus 28, 56, 56 plus the other one is... Um, 22. So can someone add up 28, 28, 56, 78. 78 divided by 3 is 26. 26 cm. So can someone calculate 0.26 equals to half gt square? Can you calculate the time? Then we'll see whether the ladies are faster. Dun, 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 dun. And that's why if that's why if I drop a dollar note. Sorry? 0.23. Okay, good. Now, can I have a representation from this gender? Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Well done, man, Hannah. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, let's see. Huh? Relax. Huh? Okay. 
Let, let, let's hope that she will do well. Huh? Oh, wow. Oh, wow, 20, 20 <laughs> centimeters. <laughs> wow, that's even faster, 18. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's a, <laughs> that, that's a little bit lax. Okay, so what do you think I should do with this data? Anomaly, correct? Anomaly, correct? Anomaly, repeat again, repeat again. <laughs> relax, relax. Ah, uh, okay. 80. Uh, so it's about 20. So three times consistent. Wow, oh, no, very consistent. Uh. So it's 18, 18, 20. So it's 36 plus 20, 56 divided by 3. That is 18.7. Can you calculate the reaction time? So we got 0 0.26 for gentlemen. 0.23 for gentlemen. Okay. And then for the ladies, the reaction time is point what? Point one nine five. Ah, right. So do you think it makes sense in the light of this? Ah, uh, that is point one nine over here, and then point two three over here. By the way, you know if the average is about point two seconds, uh, do you know how much distance the car will travel if you're driving at the, say 30 meters per second? If you multiply, right, 30 meters per second is about 6 meters. So if your car will have moved 6 meters to 8 meters probably, depending on whether your reaction time is faster or slower, before your car actually starts to break. And if you cannot imagine 6 to 8 meters, how long is this? Uh? 6 meters is probably from here to where he's standing probably there. So that's before your car starts to stop there. So actually, that's, that's the reason why police always tell you drive slower. La, because otherwise, the bigger your speed, if you multiply by the reaction time, it's going to be a huge distance before your car actually starts to stop, which is dangerous. Yeah, Sounds like an SPF uh, advertisement here. <laughs> so let's come back to the point. Do you think in the light of the reaction time being 0.2 seconds, it makes sense to quote the time to 2 dp? No, it doesn't make sense because the last number will be unreliable. Right? It is unreliable. So you need to be very careful to distinguish between the equipment accuracy and the actual accuracy of your equipment. It is limited by you, not the instrument. Can? Now, how else can we actually determine timing? If instead of using stop, start and stop using a stopwatch, what other ways can you limit or make the uncertainty even smaller? If you want to time the time it takes for two objects, for an object to fall through a certain distance. You use, sorry? Ah, you video, and then you slow-mo the whole thing, frame by frame. That's one way. Or you use light gate. You use light gates, which we have, which is connected to a timer. The thing passes through the first light gate, starts, and then passes through the other light gate, stop. So it's limited by the instrument already. You don't interfere at all. Can? But this over here, I think is going to be collected. It's collected by start stop. So it is not reliable to code it to the next dp. So you should code it to 1 dp, which is a plus minus point. Let's keep it to point 0.1, shall we? So that is neater. Plus minus point 0.1. So all your table, in the table they're going to draw up and uh, submit, you have to keep it to uh, 1 dp. Let's take a look at the question 1a part 1. Why the amplitude of the oscillation of the loaded spring must be small? How will you decide if the amplitude is small enough? Why do you think the amplitude has to be small? Then the question is how small is small, right? Yeah. Why is it? Then the other way to think about this kind of question is what happens if it is big? What do you think will happen to the oscillation if it is big oscillation? If the amplitude is big? Will it stay in a straight line? No, you hop around. So if it hops around, there will be erratic motion of the spring and therefore it will change the way it uh, reacts to the, uh, it moves. So that's why you have to keep the oscillation small so that the motion is restricted to only the vertical plane. Can? Why is there a need to collect three or more repeated sets of data? You witness it for yourself just now. Um, even when we repeat three times, the values don't stay the same. It actually hops around. So what is the kind of error they were talking about? Random error. And do we eliminate random error? We don't. We, what's the word to use? Reduce, minimize, correct. And remember I mentioned that the more, the merrier, but there is a point of time where it just doesn't make sense. Usually in the scientific data, usually they try to do as much as 20 at most. 
um, because that will constitute normal distribution and all these things. The uh, statistical part of things will be valid, valid when, once you hit 20 to 30 samples. But for our sake, three should be good enough. Um, I think point B talks about the uncertainty. So uh, in case you're interested, uh, oh, human reaction time is plus minus 0.3. So even for the gentleman, um, you're faster than normal. You are abnormally, abnormally good. <laughs> so don't feel that you are retarded, uh, please. Uh, you, you're actually better than normal already. Can't just that the ladies are better. <laughs> just that the ladies are even better. Okay. Um, next one. By the way, the Olympian's uh, reaction time is about 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Yes, right. Anything below 0 0.1 uh, on the starting pad, if they detect a change in the force on the force pad, less than 0 0.1 seconds, that's when they consider it as a force start. So from bang to 0 0.1 seconds, if there's any change, major change in the force plate sensing, right, it will be considered a force start. And force start in Olympics is very serious. Though. You know what's the consequence, right? If you force start once, disqualification straight away. So it's actually very serious. Though. Yeah, Usain Bolt, got, Usain Bolt got disqualified once because he force started. Yeah. So, yep, very serious consequence. What would be a suitable value, suitable graph for the student to plot in order to determine the value of the spring constant? With, for this, to answer this question, we need to go back to the equation t equals to 2 pi square root m upon k. You got this value, you got this value. So what should you plot to get the value of k? Or what should you plot to get a straight line in the first place? Yes, you square it. And then what do you do? 4 pi squared m upon k. You plot this. Yes, correct. And then the gradient will be the when. Now, what's the expected y-intercept of this graph? Yes, what if you don't get a zero y-intercept, what does it mean? It means that, it means there's a systematic error. Think about this. There are two possibilities. M, T squared. <clears throat> a, B. What if your graph is A? What sort of systematic error do you think there is? Zero error, okay, but zero error can also be B. Why not A? Why not B? Why must it be A? What does A mean? It means that at zero mass, there is actually a period of oscillation. Does that make sense? With no mass, there is actually a period of oscillation. It is not totally impossible because if the, if the spring is a very heavy spring, you have to judge it yourself later on. If the spring is a very heavy spring, don't you agree that the spring has to sustain its own mass as well? Agree or not? That the spring has to sustain its own mass. So it might be just that the spring's mass is contributing to the M that we did not account for. Yeah, it could be. But what about this one? What about this one? You have to get a certain mass before the spring register a period. What does it mean? <laughs> mass is too small? Systematically too small? That means your recorded mass is systematically too small or too big? Your actual graph should be here. Agree? Your actual graph should be there. So is your mass quoted, when it says 200 grams, is it smaller or bigger than the actual mass? For this time over here, it should be here. This should be the mass, but this is the recorded mass. So do you agree that the mass should be smaller or bigger? <laughs> smaller, correct. Because for this time, this should be the mass, but this is the recorded mass. So likely that there is some increase in the quoted value. The quoted value is bigger than the actual mass. Now this is scientific thinking, uh, people. This is scientific thinking. You do experiment, you come up with an approach, you do the experiment, then you look at the graph, then A, weird. Then you think, oh, this is possible reason. Then you go back and then check. Check against different masses and see whether it is correct. Then you correct your experiment to see whether it can be improved further. So this is scientific thinking. Uh, constantly looking out for patterns, constantly looking out for anomalies, constantly looking out for unexpected observation. Then check, is it my thinking that's the problem or is it the setup that's the problem? 
Then you check and see whether which one is the problem. Can? This may be trivial, huh? but when you do more complicated experiments, it gets more and more important. Can? And IB wants to see this in EE, IAs, they want to see that thinking process. Can? Not so much of the content, but the thinking process. Okay, um, here comes the next question. We talk about plotting a graph T squared against M, right? Then if I have a point over here, I'm slowly bringing us into this thing, which is how do you represent uncertainty on a graph? Say, for example, just to exaggerate things a bit, I got 20 plus minus 5 grams. How do I represent that plus minus on a graph? Yeah, error bars, exactly. So over here, say this is 20, then I will draw a bar that is 5 grams long over here and another bar that is 5 grams long over here. So this is like the... I always think of this as the Star Wars, you know, that fighter. Is it called a TIE fighter? Yeah, TIE fighter. Huh? <laughs> like the TIE fighter guy. Yeah? So, so this is uh, like the TIE fighter. Now, this is the x-axis. You also have errors in the y-axis. So therefore, it will look now like a cross. So at y error bars, x error bar. This is how you draw it. Okay? Now, what if your error bar is so small that it's lesser than one square? Is there any meaning in drawing it all? If it's so small, no point, right, if it is so small. Now, the rule is if the error bar is less than one small square, we don't represent it at all. Because no point, uh, yeah? It's no point. So whenever we see no error bar, we will take it that not that you forgot how to, not that you forgot to draw the error bar, but we take it that the experiment is so well done that it doesn't need an error bar. Okay? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we'll take it that way, huh? No, the, eh, 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 sir, I forgot. Huh? <laughs> is that it is so well done that there is no need to represent the error bar. So, now we got error bar, and then what if we have points with error bar, how do we draw the lines? So, you've got loads of TIE fighters over there. Um, T square, and you got this, you got this. You got this, and you got this. Yeah. Now, do you agree that now, uh, it's very interesting, now, instead of talking about a point, we're talking about a region that the point covers. What do I mean by region? Do you agree that this point is no longer a data point, but a data spread, covered by the rectangular, rectangle. That means the data falls somewhere inside the rectangle. Okay, so this is the uh, development of ideas. So each of the points over here covers a rectangle. There's no need for you to draw the dotted line. I'm just drawing the dotted line to set up the stage for the next thing. So how do you draw a line? Line of best fit. What are the rules for line of best fit? Anyone remember? Same number of points above and below the line. Agree? Yeah, it must have the same points. What if you have odd number of points? How? At most, plus minus one. That means four, three can. Yeah, three, two can. Cannot be one, four. Yeah, one, four cannot. Must be three, two, four, five, plus minus one. Best if the line pass through one point and then equal number of points above and below. Try to find that line. Okay, but at most, plus minus one. Um, and of course, minimize spread now the third point is the one that you're not taught in your secondary years the third point is must pass through all the error rectangles it must pass through all the error rectangles what do i mean it must pass through all the rectangles over here now do you therefore agree that even the line itself, it can have different gradients. I can have a line that passes through here, or I can have a line that passes through here. And it still satisfies this condition. So this is the line of best fit, this is the maximum line, and this is the minimum line. Okay, the three lines. Whenever we talk about uh, lines in a straight line graph in IB context, they want to see three lines. Line of best fit, um, line of best fit, maximum line, minimum line. All three lines must pass through the error rectangles. Now, there will be situations where it doesn't pass through. Um, 
if it is a case where all your data points don't pass through the line of the, the lines over here, what should you do? If like out of five points, five points or four points doesn't pass through the line that you're trying to draw, it means what does it mean? <laughs> yes. It means that random error you just everywhere. Lah. That means there's something wrong already. There's something wrong. But in the case, if you repeat the experiment, still a lot of random error, then chill, relax, comment. Comment. Comment on it. What are the possible sources? That even after trying two times, you cannot reduce the random error. It could be the nature of the experiment itself. Okay? It's okay. The developmental process needs to be made explicit. IB is okay. You're not writing a Nobel Prize winning paper. Probably for some of you, but there's no need to do that. What you need to show is that is that um, acute sense for discussion, for points of discussion. Yeah, like this is, hey, see, interesting. Why not discuss this? IB loves that. And you need to show it. So what do you need to do? So you got A, you know 4 pi squared upon K is equals to the gradient. Do you agree that there must be a plus minus gradient? The gradient itself now has uncertainty, right? Because it is either this one, this and this will give you the uncertainty in the uh, gradient. So how do you calculate? There are two ways. First way, you take the gradient of the uh, you take the gradient of the max line minus the gradient of the minimum line divided by two. That's one way. The other way is delta m equals to m max minus the m of line of best fit delta m one. Delta M2 is M line of best fit minus M of minimum. Then take the bigger delta M. Whichever is bigger will be the uncertainty. So both ways acceptable by IB. <clears throat> Whichever way you feel for, you do it. Can? Yeah. So two ways. Whichever you feel for. Both acceptable by IB. This or this. Then from the uncertainty in the gradient, you should be able to find the uncertainty of your K. Confident or not? Still remember how to find K equals to 4 pi squared over M. <clears throat> if I got a M plus minus delta M, do you still remember how to find the K plus minus delta K? I got a feeling I need to just give you a, some help just, just to check. Delta K upon K equals to minus delta M upon M. Correct. Huh? Correct. Huh? Sure. <laughs> Anything wrong or not? Yeah, exactly. Why should there be a minus? Uncertainty already plus minus. There's no need to put a minus sign. Yeah? Because remember I said that the power should be the coefficient. Some students will think that our power is minus 1, so you put a minus. No, you put a plus. Okay? So, delta K is equal to delta M upon M times K. Um, so, what do you do to find the value? So, say for example, M is equal to 4.5 plus minus 0.1. It will be equal to 0 0.1 divided by 4.5 times 4 pi squared divided by 4.5 then you will have your delta k. Follow. So delta m upon m is 0.1 divided by 4.5, and then your k is the value of k using 4.5, without uncertainty. Can? I'm giving you this kind of guidance because it's the first time. And slowly I'm going to let off. Yeah? Any questions regarding this? Uh, calculation. Let's rewind back. Huh? The plotting of points, the drawing of the three lines, the finding of delta M, and then the calculation of delta K. From there to there. Take a 10 seconds look, see whether you can connect from here to there. I realize that you don't even need to do the experiment because data has been given already. Confident or not? Elliot, are you okay or You look a little bit concerned. 
Tu vends quoi Sure <laughs> Shenin You look so bored like you have done this 2,000 times already <laughs> Gentlemen over here, any questions that you have? Do you have to do the experiment because I'm given the equipment over here. Yes. Why is the gradient equals to m plus minus? Oh, okay. Why is the gradient here? Okay. If you go back to the equation, looking at the equation, if you plot t squared versus m, which is what we did over here, hopefully you get a straight line. Huh? Hopefully. And then if you get a straight line, the gradient over here is for pi squared m. Okay. Why? Because if you plot y equals to uh, kx, okay, say alpha x, <clears throat> this is your t square, this is your m, your alpha, your 4 pi squared upon k. So your 4 pi squared upon k is your gradient. And if you rearrange the thing, uh, 4 pi squared upon k is your gradient, which is m. Now your gradient is... G for gradient. Uh. Then G again, then G will be G. Then 9.81. Okay, nah. Give up. So just remember that M is gradient. Uh. <laughs> ah, representation. Representation. The issue of representation. Okay, any things to clarify? Otherwise, I realize that you don't really need to do the experiment. So unfortunately, unfortunately you don't have to handle this. Um, probably the next experiment. Can I give you like 20 seconds again to look at number two? Scan through the different items. Have we covered everything? Process the raw data, tabulate the process data. Okay. I'll come back to that later on. But plotting the graph, plotting the error bars, drawing the maximum minimum line, calculating the gradient, uncertainty of the gradient, calculate the K. Da -da -da -da. Uh, just practical one. Uh. Practical two will be following. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think... Practical two, definitely. Practical one, I think, is already given. So, hey, practical two also given. Uh. Sienna. <laughs> cannot, cannot, cannot. Practical two, you must do it. It's very fun. Yeah, dropping the ball and then letting it roll. Do you want to do practical one or not? I, yeah, spring one. I don't think there's any harm. Lah. And then why not do it this way? Then you compare your data with the given data. Okay. Then you comment on the data. Can? And the good thing about this is that because we are only get a class of 13, each of you can do your own experiment. Then you got a feel of the whole experiment, how it is being conducted, what are the sources of error, and all these things. Cool? So let's do the data because our lesson is until 12.40, right? We got time. We got time. So the target for today is you must collect at least the data today and then you can go back home to process the data. One more thing, one more thing. I just have to show you um, how to process the data and what's the table that I want to see before you go off to collect your data. So what I want to see is this, the mass on one column, which is the first mass, first column over here, slash gram. This is how you represent the data. Time for 20 oscillation <clears throat> slash um, T1, T2, average T. I don't need you to repeat it two times. So time one, time two, average time. Um, this one should slash plus minus 0 0.1 second. Then I want to see the next column. T equals to average time divided by 20 slash plus minus 0 0.005 seconds, I think. If you take 0.1 divided by 20, I think it's 0 0.005. And the last column, I want to see t square slash second square. Now, take a look. Why is it that I put error for time for 20 oscillation, which is 0.1 second? I put the error over here for period, which is plus minus 0 0.005 seconds. And uh, why is it that I don't put the uncertainty over here for the t square. Why do you think I don't put the error for t square on top? Because the errors, the uncertainty will... Nah, you wish. Uh. <laughs> you wish, of course. Too small, too small, no need to draw. How? 
Why? Why do I not represent the uncertainty over here like this one and this one? Because, okay, if you want to find t square, y equals to t square, let y equals to t square, delta y upon y is equals to 2 delta t upon t. So delta y, which is delta t square, equals to 2 delta t upon t times t square, which is 2 delta t times t. Now, do you agree now that the uncertainty of t square depends on t? So which means that the error for different rows will be different, exactly. That's why I don't put it at the top. The reason why I put it at the top is because it's the same for all. Cool? The reason why I don't put it at the top is because it differs. <laughs> Come on, we're into real science now. Yeah? We're into real science. Yeah, it's a little bit troublesome. But this is real science, huh? you look at research paper, confirm have error bars, where does the error bar come from? All this hard work. Okay? You might want to copy this down or if you want to watch the video again, it's, it's this method. I'm giving it to you this time round because it's your first time doing it. As you do your IAs, as you do different experiments, I'll let you have the chance to do it on your own. Yes, Lauren. Two readings, yes, correct. Not three. Let's take two. Then what you should do is, what you should do if you have time and you're really interested, uh, after you calculate the K, then compare and use those data given over there to calculate the K. Not needed, uh, not needed, but if you've got the time and you really want to try it, do, uh, the, do, draw another graph based on the data given, find the K, and then compare. Uh. Hopefully it is the same. Hopefully it is the same. Now, even if it is different, uh, it's actually it should be you should be happy sometimes. You expect G to be 9.81, but you got G which is 9.7, no matter where, how many times you try the experiment. It could be something interesting happening around. Yeah. Then you plot a graph of T squared versus M. Um, the errors over here, every slotted mass that you're gonna use over here, every slotted mass that you have over here. Let's give it a bigger uncertainty. Why? So that you so that the error bars will be big enough and you have to draw the error bars. <laughs> yeah. If it is too small, you don't need to draw the error bar. Yeah. Let's have it big enough so that you get to draw the error bar. 50 plus minus 1 gram for each. So if you got 50 grams, it's 50 plus minus 1. If you got two masses, it's 100 plus minus 2, correct? If you got 200, it'd be plus minus 4. I'm waiting for a question regarding mass. I'm waiting for a question regarding mass. And the question should go like this. Why do you need to... For mass, for mass. Come on, what's the question? Okay, let me repeat this again. Huh? The mass, Mr. Chu says that the mass over here, each of them is 50 plus minus 1. Yeah, grams. Grams, if in case it is not clear to you, what's the hint? <laughs> so the question I'm expecting from you is, do you, for mass, do you need to convert to what? Tons or what? <laughs> Kg, correct. What do you think? Yes, correct, yes, correct. Because this, everything, if you look at the equation, this one, everything should be in Si. Seconds, this is in Newtons per meter. This is going to be in... Um, kg. Okay? So it has to be converted to kg. Very simple, you just need to divide by 300, uh, 300. divide by 1000. Cool? <clears throat> In case you don't know, uh, sorry for being a little bit naggy, if you take away all the mass over here, <clears throat> if you take away everything, do, 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 do. what's the mass of this? <laughs> What's the mass of this? 50 as well, correct. Plus minus 1, uh, in case you think that this is massless. Uh. Yeah, some students actually think that this is massless. Uh. Then put in this one, 50. It's 100, uh, 100 plus minus 2. Ken? Any remaining questions? Sure, no question at all. I'm waiting for another question. In fact, two. <laughs> Sorry? Yes, you have to put uncertainty in the mass. Yes, correct, correct. Of course, you have to. Then another two questions that I was expecting. 
Like, sir. Follow, follow. That's not a question. Sir is not a question. Sir? Sir? <laughs> That's not a question. <laughs> Exactly, so it will be 50 plus minus 1, 100 plus minus 2, 150 plus minus 3. Correct, that, that's correct. <laughs> he was thinking about something else. He was thinking about something else. The question I was expecting, and it is a very important question, which will determine your stress level. The question goes like this. Sir, when do I have to hand this in? <laughs> no one asked this kind of question there. So what, hand in next year? Ah, right. I got this theory, uh, I got this theory, uh, and it has been proven quite correct. Uh. If I put it over the weekend, uh, the, ex the, the, the probability of it coming in on time is going to decay exponentially. <laughs> okay, uh, knowing you all, I think you can be trustworthy, and I don't want to stress you all so, so much. And I want you to work over the weekend, which I'm sure that you spend like 12 hours a day working on this. Yeah. <laughs> You hand in on Monday, can? Can? This next Monday, ho. not like Monday, four months later. Next Monday, can? So put down somewhere in your diary with loads of love around it. I must die, die, hand in on Monday next week, can? Next question. Sir, do I have to type it out? Do I have to type it out? What do you think my response is? <laughs> okay, uh, for the first one, right, I let go, ah. Uh. But for the second one and third one onwards, I want you all to type it out. Can? You know why not? You know why not? Because your IAs will be typed out. So you better get used to it. And your, and your EEs will have to be typed out. So you have to get used to it. Now, the good thing about typing out is this. That means your graph, you also have to use digital means to draw the maximum minimum line. Go and ask your seniors. There are actually softwares to draw automatically the maximum line, minimum line, they even find for you the difference, all these things, the uncertainty in the gradient. There are softwares that does that. There are software that do that. So go and find out from your seniors what are the softwares available. Can? Okay? And that's the good thing about digital. Imagine you've got to do that manually. Oh, don't uh, use digital means. Then all you need to do is to screen capture and then paste it there. Then extract the information. It will save a lot of time. And what happens is that if you do hard copy, imagine your dog thinks that your IA is full. Uh, that's it. Uh, gone. You lose that IA, it's gone. But if you have soft copy, control P again, print again. Yeah. So that's the reason why I want to go soft copy in the future. But this time around, I want to manage your wellness. I want to manage your stress. So let's go hard copy for the first time. Okay? Yes. Okay. Good question. Do you need to show calculation for every single data point? Um, do you need to show the calculation? <clears throat> I just need you to show the calculation for one set of data. Just the first set of data. So yes and no. Yes, you got to show the calculation, but only for one set of data. Oh, no, I mean, I or what? Oh, you, that means whether you need to answer the questions. Yeah, oh. Let's, for the first one, let's focus on recording it properly, calculating it properly, the gradient, and that's all I need. Can? That means you don't need to answer all the questions, neither do you even need to type it out or write it down. For the first one, let's keep it to the recording, processing, drawing our graphs, finding the gradient. Can? You can do it by type, writing, it's fine. But I can accept writing this time around. Can, but the next few cannot, must be type written. Can, so they get used to the workflow the next few times. Cool. Strangely, uh, you all seem to prefer like writing. Why? Uh? Your handwriting is very beautiful. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> Just like every mother will think that the daughter or the son is the most pretty, the prettiest or the most handsome person in the world. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you have no questions, can you spread yourself out? We got only 13 people here. Spread yourself out. Two people to one desk so that you can spread out. Collect your apparatus and continue with the experiment. Go ahead. Have fun. Stay safe. Huh? Even though I don't think there's any danger element. 
Um, yeah, spread out, spread out, spread out. Yes, please, thank you.